Here's addition and subtraction with significant figures. Um, the rules are different than those for multiplication and division, but I actually think they're simpler. So you'll probably catch on pretty quickly. Here's an addition problem that I'm doing. Just like multiplication and division, the first thing that I want to do is the math, and then I'll round second. So I add these guys up, and here's the answer that I get. Now for rounding, my final answer can't have any more decimal places than does the number I started with that has the fewest number of decimal places. Oof. That's not easy to say. It's probably not easy to understand. It's a lot easier to demonstrate what I mean than to try to explain it. Okay? So this number up here, 13.0198, it has four decimal places. This guy here, 1.2, only has one decimal place. That means that my final answer can only have one decimal place too. I find it easy to draw a line vertically um, just to the side of the number with the fewest number of decimal places. Okay, so right here, right next to the two, just like that. That means that this number here um, is the last that I'm going to have. I'm going to get rid of all the others. So I'm going to round to 14.2, and just as we've done before, uh, look to that 1 to see whether I keep the 2 to the same or whether I round up. It's a 1, so I'm going to keep the 2 the same. That means my final answer is going to be uh, 14.2. It has one decimal place, and the number I started with, with the fewest number of decimal places, also has one. So that's how I know I did it correctly. Now, it doesn't matter if we're adding more uh, than one number. The rules are the same. Here I'm adding three, but I could be adding five or seven or ten. The first thing that I do is the math. And the next thing that I do is look at the number of decimal places in each of the numbers I added together. OK, two decimal places here because these zeros to the right of a decimal place of a decimal point are always significant. 15 here doesn't have any decimal places at all. And this number here has three decimal places. That means that the line that I'm going to draw is going to be just to the side of this 15. And it shows us where we round. That means that it's going to be 291. Look next door here. It's a 1, so I'm going to keep it the same. 291. This left us with zero decimal places, with no decimal places at all, but it's correct because the number here, 15, didn't have any decimal places, so our final answer can't have any more decimal places than this guy had here. Adding a whole bunch of numbers together follows the same rules. Subtraction also follows the same rules. So when I do this subtraction problem, I get 40.3378. Two decimal places here. Four decimal places here, that means my line goes just to the side. And three will be the last digit. Look to the right of it, to the seven. That means I'm going to round the three up to a four. So the answer I'm going to get is going to be 40.34. I'm only going to do one more example because I think this is probably making a lot of sense. Sometimes addition and subtraction problems are written like this, horizontally. When I'm given a problem like this, I find it easier to stack the numbers up vertically on top of each other just so I can see how the decimal places uh, relate to each other. So what I mean is this. I'll take 8.679 and 0 0.3 and 5.88 and stack these up vertically like this. Okay. When I do this math, Here's the answer that I'm going to get. And then I look at the number of decimal places. 0.3 has uh, the least. So my line is going to go just like this, showing me where to round. The 8 is the last decimal place. I look to the right of it. There's a 5, which means that I'm going to round this 8 up to a 9. So the final answer is going to be 14.9, which has one decimal place, just like this number here is 0.3, which also had one decimal place. So that's how we do addition and subtraction uh, with rounding for significant figures.